I've been grinding last epoch for two weeks consistently. And I thought now would be a good time to provide some feedback for 11th hour games and some of the fixes that I personally would like to see. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over five or six things that I notice that I think need improving. And in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate what I'm talking about. So let's get right to it. First things first, I personally play hardcore and softcore. So when I'm loading up every evening to play Last Epoch and stream it on YouTube and on Twitch, obviously when I log in, I have all my characters here. And although there are these little tags, hardcore, solo, hardcore, solo, um, I would appreciate and I would think it would be nice if there was some different color coding between softcore and hardcore. So there is like a visual distinction between the different softcore and hardcore players that I have, even whether it's solo, solo self found, um, it would be nice if there was some sort of methodology with the color coding. So they're easily distinguishable. Now, I know there is a manual way of showing your offline characters and your online characters. I guess in order not to clutter the screen, that would, you know, I really don't have a problem with this. However, it would be nice to have it all in one spot instead of having to click over here on the left, but that's really a, a low one. For me, the biggest improvement would be to have some sort of color coding system for softcore and hardcore. And of course, I like how already they have the tabs for cycle and legacy, so you can see the difference there. My other big, as I load into the game here, my other big, and again, it's not a huge issue, but when it comes to the map, the mapping system in Last Epoch, um, I find it a little bit uh, convoluted in, in, in a degree. Now, it's, it's, it's good, don't get me wrong, but I would like it to be a little bit more, uh, the UI more user-friendly. Um, like you have all these eras and it shows that our quests are here. Now this one is, there's no quests popping up on these ones there are. Um, and of course you can click on the active quest and it'll shoot you to it. But really I find like the navigation, like this part, a little bit clunky. Um, so if they can somehow fix that 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 would be that would be great and also the color coding again i'm getting into really the minutiae here uh, there's nothing wrong with the map if i'm going to be completely honest but since we're talking about improvements i thought it'd be a good idea to kind of cover some of the things here so even just distinguishing the different um types like whether or not you're going for passive points or idle slot rewards uh, i know i know they they are different in color coding but i find that they don't um they don't stick out from each other and i forget what the colors are but i did find them very similar so a little bit more distinction would be great but correct me if i'm wrong guys also when it comes to creating new characters in last epoch i think it would be wise upon 11th hour games to give a feature to skip the campaign uh, for alts and this game is so much fun and there's so much class diversity that no doubt about it i would hazard to guess that 99.9 .9 of the players playing last epoch have alternate characters just because all the characters are so viable and so much fun to play that I, I would imagine everybody has at least two three four characters so to be able to skip the campaign or at least give the option to the player to skip the campaign i think would be very wise now i am sure and confident that this has already been brought to the forefront but i just want to reiterate it 
I think players should be able to be able to skip the campaign. I know you can go to the monoliths early if your character is up to it, but you still have to do the campaign in order to get there. Um, so to be able to skip that part for alternates um, would be a wise move on in a, uh, for 11th hour games. Now, the other thing is equipping and unequipping pieces with plus one skill. So this relic has plus one to shield bash. This one has plus two to smite. And as you can see, my skills and specializations are completely assigned and full. So is my passives. Um, so nothing to assign, right? So if I'm going to swap out this Sentinel's Argent Crest of Deflection for the Code of Erased Sentinel, and I swap it, there is no alert on the screen. Nothing, I'm none the wiser, right? I'll go do Mollus and I'll, I'm like, whoa, what's happening? I feel a little bit different. Now, if you don't do some analysis and pick up on the fact that that little swap, this swap of relics that both have plus skills to it, actually unassigns skills and specialization and <laughs> you have to go and manually uh, fix it. So there has to be some sort of fix for this. Number one, right off the bat, I think something needs to pop up in the middle of the screen. You know, skills have changed. Uh, you unequipped a plus skill item that's changed your skill and specialization trees. Something to that impact. I don't know if there's anything they can do in reference to this, because at the end of the day, you're technically changing plus plus skills with, and my example was a relic. So, but at the bare minimum, we need to have at least something pop up to notify us of the fact that this has changed. Take a look at it. Um, now, the player may choose to or not to. You know, there are times I go with unassigned skills, call me crazy. Um, you know, for a bit and, and then I get to it, right? But when you're in the monolith and you're grinding corruptions and, and you can't, or in my case where I'm playing hardcore most of the time, where every skill point can mean life or death, I think it's important that at the bare minimum, something needs to pop up. Okay, the other thing, and this, this <laughs> I might get laughed at this, but uh, graphically, this game is amazing. Absolutely. But, and I know I'm being finicky, so don't throw the hate. I would love more options when it comes to the graphic settings. I understand we have all these options that control the ambient, control the lighting, control the reflections, the terrain. I get it. But really, I would like more options in the settings when it comes to graphics, contrast, brightness, etc. right? Um, more options here so I can fine tune um, the look and feel, especially someone like myself that streams the game. So I'm very conscious, conscious of how the game looks like on stream. Um, so it would be nice to have a lot more depth in the graphic settings um, instead of just these um, these ones here. And really, one, two, three, four, five, there's seven. There's only seven, right? I understand there's more here and there's V-Sync and, and brightness and all that kind of stuff, but I think it would need more. Okay, regarding the Forge, I just had this happen to me the other night. I don't know if this is a big deal or not, but for example, if you are crafting an item, whatever you're doing, shattering it, upgrading it, whatever, right? And you're like myself, who's a new player, still learning and uh, hats off to 11th hour games. Like the, the quality of life in this game is phenomenal. And of course, they have crafting materials that you can pop up. They have a guide, right? 
tells you what shards are, what the forging potential means, shattery, and I, you know, on and on and on and on. And, and beautiful. The quality of life, like I said, is so good in this game. But the one thing, I don't know what happened, but I guess I, my mouse must have come over to this side over here. And when I came back here, like I get this glitch where when I guess I was trying to maybe close this screen and I and I went over my amulet and back on the screen and now it won't go <laughs> it won't go away until I do that right but this is something that I find very annoying because I rely on this information back here and the fact that this will not go away uh, until I come out of here is a little bit annoying. I don't know if that's intended. I don't know why it would be intended. I know it's not a big thing, but just something that I noticed. Now, as far as the social features, um, I have to say, um, I would really love selfishly that the guild or clan feature be introduced hopefully in the next cycle i know uh, 11th hour games their priority is obviously adding to the monolith giving it more depth giving it more variety adding to the end game and the pin and adding pinnacle bosses and i'm sure they have a lot of other things on a lower priority that they're going to introduce uh in the next cycle but i would love to have a clan guild feature in this game. I have so many people coming in on my streams that play this game, love this game, and I know they would love to team up and knock off this game together. And I would love the opportunity. I've had a guild or clan in every game I played. So selfishly, I would like that feature in, in the game. Um, so hopefully, I know it's probably on their list of things to do how high up on that list i don't know but hopefully it's up there i know there's a lot of other more important things so don't get me wrong but personally and i know a lot of people would love it as well personally i would love to see the guild clan feature really beefed up and put into the game as far as everything else i know there are a lot of other issues some people are having issues or want enhancements to the stash tab and at the end of the day guys Look, this is a quality stash tab and the be, being able to transfer materials. You guys know all the good stuff that this game provides in spades. And yes, of course, they could improve the UI to some degree and the quality of life features in this game. But from it being the first release out of early access to full release, this game delivers quality of life in spades. It's going to be very interesting. I don't have anything specific that I want to highlight when it comes to quality of life, specifically the stash and our character's inventory. But I, I'm i very confident 11th Hour Games is doing such a good job in this game that they remain focused on improving what they think needs to be improved based on the feedback that we give them and they will do it. So I'm confident this these features will continue to evolve with the game. So that's unbelievable because it's already an unbelievable uh, quality of life in the game. Um, kudos to them. Now, lastly, I have another one that, again, is probably low on the priority list. And rightfully so, because I have to say... The priority that 11th Hour Games has given to certain features of this game, they've they've hit it out of the ballpark with what they've chosen to focus on and what they haven't done in the game. And um, so what I'm about to say, I understand why it's not in the game, but one of the reasons players play video games and one of the reasons... Or one of the things players enjoy the most is the look and feel of their character. They want to personalize it. And the fact of when you go and create a new character in Last Epoch, you're basically left to the default of the game. You really have no... Um, you really have no... 
outside of whether the game mode is normal or hardcore, whether it's solo account found or solo character found, there really is no character creation. It's a default. It would be very nice to have some sort of features when it comes to customizing the look of our characters. You know, a lot of people enjoy doing that, making it look like themselves, uh, female, male, whatever, right? So I personally think it would be nice, although I would put it lower than some of the other things that I talked about today. And also, I find the overall look and feel of the last epoch our characters a little bit underwhelming in the look as you can see now none of these are really uh, at the end game i haven't you know my highest character is level 85 because i'm i'm leveling multiple char characters right now softcore hardcore so i got, i'm i'm sprinkled all over the place but my my paladin is a level 85 and and he's going to be a hundred soon um but it would be nice to give a little more oomph to how our characters look now i understand there um there are microtransactions for that but i i, I don't know i i find them a little bit underwhelming when you're playing the game it would be nice to be a little bit more pimped up if that if that makes any sense and i don't think it's fair to even though this game is amazingly priced and worth every penny and actually they could probably charge double for this game and i know i personally would still buy it it's worth that kind of dollars this game is a quality game but it'd be nice i hope this makes sense but it'd be nice when you're playing the game the character that you're playing with because you have an aerial aerial view all the time of your character it'd be nice for it to stick out and, and and represent what you want it to represent as far as the look whether you want to be flashy whether you want to be tough whether you, you want to be <clears throat> nimble you, you know what i mean it'd be nice to give more customization instead of regardless of who you're watching playing this game they all kind of blend in together um it would be nice to have some uniqueness there i i hope that makes sense anyway that's it for me really not a lot um and as i come across more issues i'll um i'll, I'll raise them but i'd like to hear some of your opinions and thoughts uh, on what needs to be fixed or what you would like to see improved i think the word improved would be better because this game is knocking it out of the park people are playing it left right and center uh, good on 11th hour games. I have people coming into my stream every evening just saying nothing but good things about this game. So it's good to see. I am experiencing the same thing. I'm, I can't wait to log in every night. I can't wait to try all the different classes. Um, so let me know what your experience. Maybe you have a lot more hours in the game and you've come across some things that need improvement. Put them in the comment section. I would love to hear them. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear them. Get in there and let me know. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and the content. And if you could like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are a subscriber or you are subscribing, please hit the bell as well. This way you get notified. A lot of times YouTube will remove subscribers from certain content creators. Not on purpose. It's just what happens. Hitting that bell, hit that bell so you get notified. I would appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a terror, everyone. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.